will contain supplies for the American Aeros exhibition and bits that I need in order to clean the 18th century ceiling. So, wow, we have a lot. So in, I'm just gonna kind of show this to everybody. So this is gonna help me really with book binding to be perfectly honest, but also the dry sponge for other bits of conservation. I just have some liquid soap, but like conservation quality liquid soap and a little spray bottle. I think I can put some of this in there and spray it when I need it, when I when used on a, on a bigger surface. So coming into some of the supplies, here are some book pillows, which where is where Alberta, our American heiress's journals and diaries, once I've repaired them, will be sat, but they'll be under something. Then this is the shelf that uh, the book pillows will sit upon. So we've got that. Again, I'm gonna keep them in their protective casing. This is literally so exciting. I'm gonna have to find a space for this. But I think I know right now. Whoa, here we go. Okay. Oh my gosh. What? What's this? This is, hmm. Okay, we'll have to open that up in a second. I'm not sure what that is yet. I have my order form, but it's in my backpack. Now, I know that these, that these are the portable, this is so exciting. These are the portable display cases. And that's the shelf that I just showed you, which will go at the bottom here. And then the book pillow will go on top. So these need to be kept. Um, and I might even keep them in this box. I might put them back into this box. In fact, that is what I'm going to do. So there's two more down here. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Wow. What I have here also is, this is just a really good um, wax polish. And again, this is a brush that I'm going to need to clean the fireplace in the library. This right here are, is uh, some dry sponges and these will be used to clean the 18th century, the Georgian ceiling in the library, dry sponges. Look at, I got proper hat mounts. How brilliant is that? So I need to look at the state of some of the hats again. We've got quite a few and we might go look at those and to see what state they're in. So that's a hat mount. Um, this is another one. Yep, a museum hat mount. Oh, that's right. This is exciting. So we've got this big dry sponge here, but look at this, everybody. This is a good one to have, a big one, yeah, but these are all tell you. So for example, this one for using, um, uh, we're gonna go down to here. So we take 4101, that's this one. So we can kind of put it that way. This is really important. This is using for paintings, for frescoes, murals, paper, wallpaper, textiles, and plastics. So this will be great for the ceiling, of course. Um, as well as this one as well. This is frescoes, stucco, lime plaster. These are the soft ones. Then they go up to hard and extra hard. How brilliant. This is so exciting. So I'm gonna keep that in there so I don't rem forget what they're used for, but that will be used for uh, the library. The dehumidifier has been running for about 90 minutes and I want to check it to see how much water so far just in those 90 minutes. I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to check the back. I love this. Oh my goodness. Oh my. This is an hour and a half, everybody. Listen. Oh, okay. Can you hear that? 
Can you, anybody hear that? Well, there's the water there. I wanted to shake that for camera. That is water in here. Now, it's not full. I'd say it's about, there's about a quarter of the way up here. So I'm going to play, put it back and let it continue just to run and do its job. But that makes me incredibly happy because I now know that it's taking in the, uh, you know, the condensation that's in here. So how brilliant is that? There we go. And it just does that flashing light to, to reset itself and then it will turn on. Let's go look at some hats, shall we? Have you ever wanted to be Lord or Lady of the Manor and stay in a grand castle or stately home with great friends and family? When I lived in the US, I was fascinated by these places, the extraordinary history, the royal connections, and of course, the stunning historic buildings and works of art. I've been lucky enough to marry into one of these families and I now live here at Mapperton, which is known as Britain's finest manor house. But now it is also possible for you to stay in many of these great houses and estates thanks to Storied Collection. Storied Collection offers exclusive hire of private estates and castles across the United Kingdom and Ireland, where the historical significance and legacy of each property are carefully preserved. And guess what? Mapperton is now officially a member of Storied Collection too. Each historic house within Storied Collection has been handpicked to ensure the highest standards of accommodation and service. They cater to a range of interests, including fishing, golfing, or enjoying guided tours by the owners themselves. So whether you're organizing a grand family reunion, an exhilarating trip with friends, a corporate retreat, or even a wedding, these places offer an accessible way to turn your dream into memories that you will cherish for a lifetime. And it's much more affordable than you think. With a diverse range of castles, manors, and mansions, a stay with storied collection is a unique opportunity that is not to be missed. And please remember to mention Julie when booking to receive a 1,000 pound discount on any stay of five nights or more. Click the link in the description below to explore and reserve the historic home of your dreams. I know that there are some boxes in here that contain hats, so lovely hat boxes. Now, I haven't looked at these for a really long time, but because of the exhibition and now the new hat mounts that I have, I want to be able to put a couple on display. So let's just have a look here. So this one I can already tell, this one I can already tell will be Alberta's son, Victor. Let's have a look at that. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. It's brilliant. And what it has on the inside, which is great, it has Lock & Co Hatters, St. James's Street, and then it has an H for, because this would have been given to him or he would have bought it when he was Viscount Hinchingbrook. So that's the H there. Then, so that possibly might go on display, maybe. Then what we have in here, mm, let's see, I think if I'm correct. Okay, I'm having clearly a difficult time opening this, which is probably a good thing. Yes, yes, yes. So this I know is Alberta's hat. Now, unfortunately, everybody, it has, um, has a bit of moth damage, but um, I think I'm gonna be able to do a bit for the display and clean it off a bit with the dry sponges that you just saw. So I'm going to do what I can with this. Um, and the box actually looks all right. So it's not as bad as I thought. And for some reason, I remember where, seeing Alberta wear this, but I can't quite picture it in my mind. And then here, 
have another one. So this is Lock & Co Hatters. Obviously, it was the place to get your hats. And ooh, this one's fantastic. And again, in pretty good condition. So I think out of all, and most likely this would have been George's, I think for the hat display, because I have two, uh, I will do that and I will do this. And what's really interesting about this hat in particular, even though it's got quite a bit of moth damage, what we do know from Alberta's journals and diaries is that she and George traveled quite a bit to the Far East, whether that was the Orient or India. And she brought back lots of textiles, clothing, uh, chattels, etc., cetera, from, um, from the Orient from, and from, from India. And of course, part of the display we will um, put on in the exhibition will be about um, her friendship with Swami Vivekananda the great Indian Hindu monk that she followed really. And so I think it's important that Alberta is in one sense represented in that way uh, in the clothing that we're gonna put on display. And I already have a really special dress that you actually haven't seen yet on the YouTube channel that we know uh, has come from Alberta and again represents her and that love that she had of the Far East. So what I'm gonna do now is put these back in. This one needs some conservation, that is for sure. And this one is in actually really good shape. I'm so pleased. So these are the two hats. I'm gonna actually bring these down to the uh, Minimit room, but I do love this one as well and this is their you know, let's just look at it one more time. I think it's lovely. This is Victor's. I think it's brilliant. But I'm not going to put that one on display. I really want it to focus on Alberta and, and, and George. All right, so I'm going to put this one back. And that's it. So I'm just going to use the dry sponge on this hat that has been, of course, damaged by moths. but. Look at the color now, and then we're gonna compare it to afterwards. So at least I can try to get it in shape. So if you watch here, you can already see it. I mean, it's incredible. These dry sponges are amazing. And you can see in here a little bit, like if I open it up, I'm trying, and then I'll get rid of that with the dry sponge as much as I can. And you can see it does quite well. Um, I'm gonna have to just open this whole thing up and get rid of the, the moth bits that I see. But the dry sponge is like, uh, it's literally a miracle. So, wow, this is incredible. I think it, apart from the holes, I think after I finish this, it could look actually almost brand new ish. Well, you know what I mean. Well, I think it looks much, much better. Obviously, there is the moth damage, but I think we can use this on the display. Of course, this is damaged, and there will be, you know, that will have to be repaired at some point, but I don't know if it would be repaired in time for the exhibition, but it's so, it's much, much better. And actually this, I'm gonna take this tissue paper out and um, put it in with um, acid-free paper as well, everybody. So don't worry about that. And this box is actually all right for now, as long as I wrap it in acid-free paper. So that's it, I've done it. Well, today's the day, everybody. I'm heading up on the scaffolding. I have my dry sponges ready. I'm gonna be using the um, sensitive and sort of soft, really, classic ones, um, which is really, really exciting. Look at this. I mean, it is so exciting. These are dry cleaning sponges. They're fantastic for stucco, for lime, for plaster, 
And that's what I want to do. So I'm going to head up now. If I encounter, by the way, any really, really tough spots, I am um, going to be looking at using a little bit of this liquid soap. I haven't even opened it up. Um, mixing it with a, quite a little, a, a lot of water and then giving it a, a light spray. But for now, I'm just going to start with my dry sponge. All right, so let's have a look at this ceiling here. Um, we do have our very own scaffolding. Am I doing it the wrong way? Probably. Yeah, it's much easier for me. I'm quite limber. Um, we do have our own scaffolding. Oh God, scaffolding here at Mapperton. We invested. <laughs> I could have used the stairs, but it's much easier for me to do it that way. Um, oh my goodness. There's just a lot of cobwebs up here. A lot of cobwebs. Are these the stairs I should have taken up? I mean, what do you do then? Flip over there? Yeah, yeah, that was much easier. Um, so, oh my goodness. So I'm just gonna, wow. Cobweb hanging down here. You have to be so careful, everybody. But look at right away when I do that. It's unbelievable. And I'm very, very careful. The difference that it's already making. Again, I just, we're not painting this. No way. We're just, it's unbelievable what these dry sponges do. Oh my goodness, it really, Look at, you can just see the little bits that I did. I've just done a tiny, tiny bit. And that is how much dirt I got off just with those, those little bit. Now, the difficulty here is, of course, this is quite intricate. It's very detailed. And that is where I'm gonna have to be really careful. But holy cow, I feel that it's very happy. The ceiling is, this Rococo ceiling is very happy that I'm up here. This is great. It's so amazing. It's, I mean, you can't really see it from far away, but it's unbelievable what these dry sponges do. I mean, it's just incredible. You just look at, I mean, look at that. that I've been doing this for, what, a minute? Well, you can see it's getting a bit dark outside and I think it's time for me to stop. I'm actually feeling exhausted. I feel so sore, like my shoulders and my neck and even my eyes are quite sore right now just because I was looking up the whole time and I started out on the scaffolding, but I felt it wasn't high enough. So, and I probably could have lifted it up higher myself, of course, but I, just decided to then go to the ladder and do and just move the ladder around because I could get high enough and kind of I don't know I just felt a little bit more mobile weirdly I just make any sense on the ladder um, but the crazy thing is is I know it's getting dark right now but when I look up I think oh I can't really tell a difference between the half of the side that I did and the other half, which is to my to my right, isn't finished, um, but this side is. So I'm like, if I were to stand here, straight down, and I've got Medusa's head, I'm gonna call her Medusa, I'm sure I got that wrong, but wow, she has been transformed. She had like black spots all over her nose, awful, and kind of everywhere. And I managed to get all of those, pretty much all of them off. I mean, she, she probably, she actually really likes me, I don't have it. But when I sit here without any light on, I'm like, oh, I can't really tell the difference between the half that I did and the, sort of the half that I haven't done. But I know when I come in the morning, I hope, it's, I'm gonna be able to see a difference because when I was up there, I was like, oh my gosh, this is really, there's a lot of cobwebs and dirt. And I wanted, I was like almost becoming OCD about it because I wanted to get, I, you know, I didn't, I don't know when the next time we're going to be able to clean the ceiling, you know, because it requires all of the stuff that you see in here, sort of the lining of the floors and ladders and scaffolding. And so I wanted to, I wanted to do it right. And I guess I'm just like, I'm just a little emotional right now because probably like out of all my Mapperton projects that I've done, 
which happened a lot. This has been the hardest by far. Um, the dry sponges were amazing. Occasionally I'd have to use a little bit of spray, which is for conservation, so it's um, mild and, and just for harder bits, but it's like, I don't even know how to describe it, everybody. It's like this Rococo ceiling is so intricate and delicate. And so I was having to get into these like tight spaces, but like everywhere. And that was filled with like dirt and cupboards. And um, I think it's just exhausted me. It's like the hardest, this is definitely the hardest, most difficult job I've done here and I think I'm just so exhausted. I'm also like proud of myself, but then I step down and I'm like, I can't really see a difference. <laughs> there must be a difference because like so much came off and um, and yeah, I just want to like do a really good job. Um, anyway, sorry everybody, I'll probably edit this, delete this out, um, but I'll keep talking in case I don't. <laughs> so you can see behind me in the bright spot, there's two bookcases, and so these bookcases were attached to the wall, and they were literally were attached to the wall. There wasn't a back to them. So we've taken them off, we put a new backing so we can paint them that dark sort of mahogany color called Dulwich Red. Um, and then we can paint the wall behind them. So that's, those are ready to be painted. I mean, everything's ready to be painted. It's just waiting on me, and so I have to finish this ceiling tomorrow. And, um, yeah, anyway, I really hope tomorrow when I wake up, it's gonna look good. Because I've just spent so much time on this. Oh my goodness, anyway, I think it's time for a bath. Well, I'm back at it, first thing in the morning, and I'm feeling much better, everybody. I had a proper sleep, and now that I can see it, in the daylight, I can definitely uh, make a, a difference. So I'm really, really happy, very pleased. I mean, I look around and I'm like, oh my gosh, I did that, I did that. I mean, there's some places that I'm like, oh, I've got to go back over, but for the most part, I'm just about to the end. So I have to get this middle bit here, um, a little bit more of that, but that's almost done. And that, I've done, but I might just go back over it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around, um, really the, the frieze around the wall one more time, because we're not painting that. That's again, you know, that's the plaster work. So I'm just gonna go around that one more time with my dry sponge. But yeah, I'm really happy I did this um, now. <laughs> I've learned a lot, which is great. And yeah. I'm so pleased. So the painting's about to begin and I just think it's going to look so much better. I actually can't stop staring at it because I'm so pleased with how it looks. I'm actually, but then I'm like, oh wait, I forgot that bit. <laughs> or I need to get that bit a little bit better, but I'm actually, like I literally am looking around being like, There's, I've done a good job. Hours of this, hours. Anyway, a little bit more to go. And then we're gonna take down the scaffolding because we're not gonna use the scaffolding for painting and we're ready to transform this room. I'm so excited. Thank you for watching Mapperton Live and please join us again next week. If you'd like to find out more about becoming a patron, please go to patreon.com forward slash Mapperton Live.